Hi, my name is Aiden, and in this screencast we will extend our ASP.NET 5 ng2 seed project to use ASP.NET identity and add users to our database that we'll use later to sign in and fetch our shipments for. In the current state of the application, we can fetch all shipments from the database, and we are doing that by accessing this data controller which calls to an AppDB context and just lists all the shipments that are stored in our SQL database. So now let's add some users by enabling a spinet identity. To do that, we're going to open our project.json file and add a couple of new NuGet packages. We're going to add Microsoft ASP.NET identity, and we're also going to add a package that that allows us to store the identities with Entity Framework. If we save this file now, we're going to restore the packages. And as always, we're going to switch to our startup file. And then before using it, we're going to need to add a spinet identity to the application container. So we're going to go type services, add identity. And here we're going to specify the user and the role classes. And ASP.NET Identity provides, or actually the Entity Framework module of ASP.NET Identity provides a default identity user and a default identity role. If we would like to extend our user, uh, we can simply just inherit identity user and then add whichever properties we'd like to store along with the user. Uh, so this will be the class that's going to be used to generate the users table. And we're also going to add entity framework stores and pass in our AppDB context. And that will be it for now. And then in our configure method, we're going to call app use identity. So now we're going to switch to our DB context and inherit identity DB context instead of just DB context. And by doing that, we will get a users table and a roles table and a couple of others. We're going to investigate what we get in a couple of minutes. So we're also going to want to seed a couple of users to our database if we don't have any users. So if context users is empty then we're gonna want to use a user manager and we're gonna resolve a user manager into our constructor which takes which type of users we want to uh, create and that's the identity user we haven't customized this let's assign this to a local field as well Format this so it fits onto the screen. And let's create two users and assign one of the shipments and, and assign one shipment each to each one of the users. So let's iterate up to two and create a user. With a username test and then the loop variable and the same thing will be for the email I'm gonna say test the loop variable at tester.com and now we can use the user manager to create this user async pass in the user and then a password let's just give it one two three Query exclamation point. Let's do a capitalized Q. And now it tells us that we need to await this call since it's async. So let's do that. And we're also going to want to extend our shipment model with a string username. and assign each 
shipment with one of the users. So test zero and then test one. So we're gonna get rid of the database and then just reseed it. We don't want to uh, find these and then update the username. So we're gonna make it a bit easier for us since we're still in development and haven't gone to production yet. Let's switch back to the command prompt and generate a new migration script. This was this is from the last time we actually ran it, so let's add a new migration script and call it added identity or just identity. And we can see that we now have two scripts. And this will add a couple of new tables for us. And it should also have added a new column to our existing shipments table. And we can see that right here. So let's upgrade the database. And since we've added the username column with the uh, as a nullable, we can see that the username is null. So uh, we can either just fill in test zero, or zero and test one here, or we could just get rid of this database since we're still in development and just recreate it and let the seeder do the job. So let's switch back and do a database update again. And this time it will apply the initial create and the identity uh, migration. And if we run the application now and run the seeder. So we had a breakpoint there from earlier. We can see that we fetched the data since we haven't changed that. But if we also investigate, let's detach the debugger. But if we also investigate the schema, you can see that we have our ASP.NET column uh, tables here. And if we take a look in the users table, we can see that we have two users, test zero and test one, that will be able to sign in into our application uh, with the password that we set for them. So now let's come here to the data controller and, and require authorization to get data from this controller. And instead of just giving all the shipments here, Let's get the ones that just belong to us, which will be user, identity, and name. Format this a bit nicer. Shipments, where, and to list. And if we switch back to the browser now and refresh, we shouldn't be able to get the data since we haven't authenticated ourselves. And as we can see, we tried to get redirected to account login. And the 404 is because we don't have a controller that responds to account login. So this is the path that's gonna, that it's gonna try to redirect us to by convention. And we can easily change this by coming to our startup class. And then in our Add identity method, take in a configuration object and pass in to our lambda, and then configure cookies, application cookie, login path, and then give it whichever path that we'd like. So let's say we're gonna name our controller off the, the login the login page will be named login. So if we switch back to the browser now, we can see 
and take out the developer tools and we can see that we are trying to, trying to redirect to off login instead. So to be able to fetch data now, we're going to need to authenticate ourselves. So we're going to do that in next screencast.